Last time on Left Behind. Hey, fucko, you're throwing your career away. Your life for crying out loud. The Wrath of the Lamb. From the book of Revelation. There's a reference to an earthquake in there. According to this, the moon's going to turn the color of that cover. Fuck, I'm keeping your secret, so I hope you're keeping your end of the bargain. Already I am catching a vision for what could happen with the technology before us. I love you so much. Goodbye, Rayford. The fact is... I want an abortion. You're going to wage war on the fundamentalists? In a sense, I am. We would call them the Global Community Morale Monitors. Based on Nikolai, the third book in the best-selling series... Tyndale House Publishers proudly presents episode 36 of the dramatic audio edition of Left Behind. Cameron. Doc, how are you? I brought you something here. Oh, I see. Something to counteract my exercise regimen. <laughs> Doc, one burger and a few fries won't kill well, you. A steady diet of them on the other hand. <laughs> so are you actually able to work out down here? I am. Uh, about an hour a day. <laughs> Pole vault? Sorry. Ah, uh, forget it. Exercising the body keeps me in a better frame of mind. Hmm. I'm really glad to hear it. Cameron, were I not living with a heaviness of soul right now... Certain parts of this place, even in its location, would be paradise. I, I can read, I, I can study, I, I can pray, I, I can communicate by phone and computer. <laughs> it is a scholar's dream. I, I miss the interaction with my colleagues, but Amanda and Chloe are wonderful students themselves. Oh, thank you. Yeah, they took the lady I told you about back to the airport in Milwaukee. Yeah, so was it Hattie? Mm. Right. She's on her way back to New Babylon. Carrying the child of the Antichrist. <laughs> a shame. Hmm. I wanted some kind of breakthrough with her. <laughs> These things take time, Cameron. Uh, time is a funny animal lately, isn't it, Doc? Uh, we should pray for her now. Hmm. Oh, God, we bring Hattie to you and pray for your intervention in her life and the life of the child she Potentate, I have disturbing news to report regarding Hattie Durham. Yes? Apparently she flew from Milwaukee to Boston, but did not connect with her flight to Baghdad. Where is she now? Uh, well, Where is she? I will personally find out and report to you with... I want an answer immediately! No, wait. Perhaps she is taking care of the problem. I will have an answer by the time we reach New Babylon, Potentate. But she is a loose cannon, Leon. A possible embarrassment. You will find her. Cameron, I need to talk about my family. I, I hope you don't mind. Oh, Doc, you can talk about them anytime you want. Forgive me for not asking more often. I know you wonder if you should bring up such a painful subject. That, as long as we don't dwell on how they died, I am most pleased to talk about my memories. Your wife seemed like a wonderful woman. She was. And the children, too, though our family was human. You told me they all became believers shortly after you did. Mm, yes, I, I don't understand how anyone with any exposure to the Bible could doubt the meaning of the mass vanishings. It breaks my heart. Here, I, I want you to see this. I am nearly finished with the first booklet in a series based on Bruce's writings. He was not a linguist, and so I'm adding some of that to his work. I think it makes for a, a better final product. Hmm. I'm sure Bruce would agree. Looks great. You know, I'll likely be the first to join you here on a permanent basis. <laughs> I cannot see you as content to hide out. <laughs> It'll drive me crazy, there's no doubt about that. But I've been careless. I'm taking risks. The cover story? Well, it's bound to catch up with me. You will be able to do what I can do on the Internet. Yeah. Imagine what you can do with the truth. You can write the way you used to write, with total objectivity and seriousness. Say that again. What? About the truth. I said you can write the truth, that's all. Hmm. Truth. 
Good name for a magazine, don't you think? Well, I suppose. Look at this. Check this out. I could write the copy, design some simple graphics, and publish it on the net. Donnie assures me that we can never be traced here. Hmm. Interesting. Cameron, while I wouldn't want to see you forced into self-incarceration, I confess I would enjoy the company. You wanted to see me, sir? Oh, Captain Steele. Yeah, yeah. Let me get straight to the point. Uh, Miss Durham knows you. She has confided in you. Hmm? Thus, it should come as no surprise that there has been some trouble in paradise, as they say. She told me there had been problems. Mm -hmm. Well, let me be frank. Miss Durham overestimated the seriousness of our relationship. A man in my position has no room for a personal life. Now, she seemed pleased with the prospect of bearing a child. My child. Now, should she take the pregnancy to term, I would, of course, exercise my fiscal responsibility. However, it is unfair to expect me to be a father. Sir, I'm not sure I understand why you're telling me this. I have needs like any other man, Captain Steele. You understand. The fact is, I, I am enjoying another relationship already. Therefore, you can see my dilemma. What about the ring you gave her? Oh, she may keep it. The stone was much too large for an engagement ring. It clearly is decorative. I will do the right thing by Miss Durham, rest assured of that. You're saying that you'll give her some sort of severance or settlement? Yes. If that will make it easier for her, I, I am happy to do that. Oh, Captain Steele, I have an assignment for you. I deduced that. <laughs> of course you would. You are a bright man. Uh, we have received word that Miss Durham is back on her itinerary and is expected in Baghdad on a flight from Boston Monday morning. Monday morning. Yes, assuming you are free, I would ask that you would meet Miss Durham's plane. As her old friend, you will be the right one to break this news to her. Her belongings have been delivered to one of the condominiums in your building. You've already moved her out? She will be allowed to stay there for a month before deciding where she would like to relocate. Aren't you asking me to do what you ought to do? <laughs> oh, make no mistake. I'm not afraid of this confrontation. It is just that I am under such crushing deadlines. We have established many new directives and, and legislative encyclicals in light of the recent insurrection. You see, I simply cannot be away from the office. Any questions? No. That's all clear. You will do it, then? I wasn't under the impression I had a choice. <laughs> you have a good sense of humor, Captain Steele. Your military background has trained you well. When a directive is given... It is to be carried out. I appreciate that. Oh, uh, before you go, yes, might I ask you one further question? Sure. Yes, I would like to know about your relationship with Cameron Williams. Do you know him? Yeah, he's my son-in-law. Hmm. And can you think of any reason why he would not have shared that uh, happy news with me? I suppose you'll have to ask him that, sir. Well, then perhaps I should ask you. Why would you not have shared that with me? It's just personal family business. Anyway, with him serving you at such a high level, I assumed you'd become aware of it soon enough. Does it happen that he shares your religious beliefs? I prefer not to speak for Buck. I will take that as a yes. I am not saying that this is necessarily a problem. Well, I will look forward to a report of your meeting with Miss Durham, and I have full confidence that it will be successful. Buck Williams. Buck, I just got an interesting call from Rayford. Uh, Amanda, where are you? Almost to New Babylon. It we landed in about an hour. Hmm. Well, what did he say? He asked if I'd met up with Hattie on the flight from Boston to Baghdad. Hmm. She got off schedule or something, so he thought she might have hooked up with me. And she didn't. No. Do you know what's going on? Oh, I have no idea. 
I just hope Patty didn't stop in Boston to have an abortion. I'd have flown with her if I'd known she was going to delay her return. Well, maybe you'll see her there. I hope so. Hmm. Chloe misses you already, by the way. Oh. Yeah, she's really bummed about you leaving. I wish I could talk Ray into letting me move back that way. I'd, I'd see less of him, but I don't think much of him in New Babylon either. Hmm. Yeah, well, don't forget about the computer. Yeah, except we're nine hours later than you guys. Hmm. I mean, what time is it there, anyway? A little after eight in the morning, right? Yeah. Hmm. Our little tribulation force is about as spread out as it's ever been. I sure hope Ray's right about Hattie. It'd be handy if he can pick us both up. Yeah, this is Rayford Steele. I need a ride to pick up Miss Durham in Baghdad. Um, and my wife is oh, at the... sorry, sir. I'm no longer Miss Durham's driver. I've been reassigned to the executive suite. Hmm. Um, any idea where I could get some wheels? Uh, you could try the motor pool... That takes a while. Lots of paperwork. Oh, I don't have the kind of time. Uh, any other suggestions? If the potentate called the motor pool, you'd have a vehicle as quick as you wanted. Oh, yeah. Good idea. Thanks. The office of the potentate? Yes. Uh, Rayford Steele. I need to talk with the potentate. I'm sorry. I... He is unavailable. Is he there? He is here, sir, but as I said, he's not available. Well, this is sort of urgent. Uh, if he's at all interruptible, I'd appreciate talking to him for, for just a second. Please hold. The potentate wants to know if you could drop by his office for a moment before you finish your assignment. Um, I'm a little short of time, but... I'll uh, tell but... him you'll be here then. Good day. Uh, uh... This is McCollum. Mac, you free right now? Yeah, Ray, where you at? Almost at the Global Community Headquarters. I'm heading up to Carpathia's office. Yeah, Ray, what's up? Um, I need a chopper ride to Baghdad. My wife's coming in, and I'm supposed to meet Hattie Durham as well. <laughs> I've been hearing all kinds of rumors about her. Like what? Well, like Carpathia squeezed her out, and, uh, that she might be in the family way. I'm not at liberty to say anything, Mac. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be in Carpathia's office in a few minutes. Hey, uh, what's up? Uh, what's going on there? Uh, it's the strangest thing. <laughs> you know how every condo around here has some kind of rare breed of dog? Yeah, especially don't like those poofy things. Yeah, uh, well, they're going... Crazy. One just broke away from his owner when running down the street. Yeah, probably just a full moon coming up. Hey, listen, I'll see you at the helipad in about ten minutes. Um, uh, good. Uh, thanks. Okay, okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, how's that? Uh, Doc, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, perfectly. Oh, okay. uh, I thought we should try the video feature. Yeah, <laughs> that's impressive. Let's hope Donnie's dead on about being untraceable. Uh, are you in a secure area? Yeah, I'm in my office. What's up? I would like a companion for breakfast. I'm, I'm feeling much better today, but I'm getting a little claustrophobic here. <laughs> I know you can't sneak me out, but could you get in without Loretta suspecting? Oh, I can try. What would you like for breakfast? Oh, no, no, I have cooked something American just for you. Uh, can you see it back there? You've cooked American. Okay. <laughs> I think I'd rather be surprised. I'm on my way. Alice, I'll be gone a couple of hours. Just hold my messages. Okie dokie. I could swing by Loretta's and get Chloe, but we'd have to think of something to tell Loretta at the church. Huh. Can't walk in without her seeing me. Maybe... Yeah. We could say hi to Loretta, then leave the back way and slip down to the shelter. Okay. That'll work. Here we Windy city weather. Nice day. Mostly sunny with a very slight chance of a bad <laughs> shower. Huh. Today, well, well, I have never seen snakes on the road before. Hey, bud, yeah. watch out for the roadkill. It's getting out of hand. Uh, yeah. yeah. Ever, uh, ever seen anything like this? Never. Must be a forest preserve or something nearby, huh? Uh, not that I know of. Hey, check it out. Don't see that every day at this intersection. Whoa! A deer! Huh. What's with the stoplight? Weird, huh? <laughs> yeah, can't, uh, get a win. Something I think of. Oh, no. <laughs> hey! What's... Thank you for stopping in, Captain Steele. I just wanted to reiterate about Miss Durham. Ah. Uh, she may ask to talk to me. That will be out of the question. Excuse it... me, potentate, sir. We are getting some strange readouts on our power meters. Power meters? I leave maintenance to you and your staff, sir, Leon. Sir, there's an emergency call from the International Seismograph Institute. Oh, take that, Leon. I am busy. Leon Fortunado. 
Uh, as I was saying, Miss Dora may want to talk to me. What? It... Leon! Uh, but, sir... Captain Steele, I was talking to Matt, you. where are you? I'm on the roof. Good. Start her up. I'm on my way. Sir, the seismograph... It... Steele, where are you going? I would like order in here, please. What's happening? I'm right behind you, Captain. is churning like water. Baghdad! Get us to Baghdad Airport now! Time to find out what this car is really made of. Uh, again! Uh, 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 gotta call Chloe. Uh, whoa! 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 No way I can try and punch numbers now. Oh, God. Help me make it home. Oh. Oh, man. What happened to the sun? Huh. It's totally dark, and the, and the street lights. It's, it's like midnight. Oh. There you go, headlights. Oh, no! Oh! 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 oh. This crack must be ten feet deep. Oh, I don't get out of here. Oh, I want to be crushed. Oh, I, can, I can crawl out the window. Uh, uh, okay. Okay, baby. All right. All right, car. Let's see what your all-wheel drive can do. Come on. Come on. Come on. Look out for the sidewalk! Oh, oh man. This is unbelievable. Oh, oh, oh. Straight lamp! Oh! Uh, uh. West. West, yeah. Okay. West is. West is that way! Uh. Uh. Oh, God. God. Did you get us through all of this just to let us be killed by an earthquake? Mm. Oh, please. Please. Uh, uh, keep Chloe safe. Oh, and Doc and, and Loretta. Uh, but if you're gonna take them, oh, I pray you do it quickly. Oh, don't, don't let them suffer. Oh, I've never seen anything like that. Everywhere, the ground, it's rolling like the ocean. How much further to the airport? A few more minutes. Uh, what is it, Mac? Up there. It can't be. How could the... Look at the moon! Red. No, as red as blood. I'll bet you're excited to see your husband again. I am. <laughs> Sorry. I couldn't help but overhear your phone conversation. <laughs> we're newlyweds. Oh. Both of our spouses were taken in the disappearances. Mm. Well, I hope you have a wonderful reunion then. Thank you. <laughs> He's probably at the air airport right now. Waiting. That's strange. The, the airport. <laughs> For a minute, I, I thought it was moving. <laughs> what, what's going on? I, th I thought that we were landing. Something made him change his mind. Just, oh. just hold on. It, it looks like he's going to try and, and turn it around. No, it's all right. Hold on. Oh. How in the world could anyone survive that? The safest place in the world right now is in the air. Oh, God. Let her still be in the air. And if not, receive her under yourself without her suffering. Please. And Hattie, oh, 
I hope she came to faith in you before all of... Look! What? Look! From the sky! No, meteor... Ray, this is not a meteor shower! Come on! Go! Whoa! Whoa, what was that? Oh! oh. oh. Meteors! Oh. I gotta get out of here! Oh. Come on! Oh. Oh. Now, just like nothing ever happened, the sun comes out. Which way you want to go here? Baghdad. Listen, Ray, you can see as well as I can. Everything's gone. There's no hope of any. I don't care what it looks like. Take me to the airport. Captain Steele, I understand your concern for Miss Dora. My but... wife was on a flight that was due in a few minutes ago. Amanda? All right, Ray, just off starboard. You can see the airport or uh, what's left of it. Oh, dear God, no. No! Set us down here, Mac. Set us down! Unbelievable. God, help me find Doc and Loretta and all this rubble. Hmm. Huh? Sun's out. Like it never happened. Loretta's car. Oh. <clears throat> An arm. No. No. Loretta? No. No! Come on! Loretta! Loretta! No! Oh, Loretta! Oh, I, can't, I can't leave you here. Oh, but even if I could move the car, there's no place to take you. Oh, Loretta... Loretta, I'm so sorry. Doc. Doc. Oh, Doc. Oh. Doc. 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 Doc, are you down there? Doc. Doc. Oh. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, Doc, I can hear you. I can hear you. Are you all right? I am all right. Oh. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. You don't want to see what's going on up here anyway. Oh, whole house is everything swallowed into the ground. Oh, thank God you are right, Doc. Oh, she, oh, she's. Oh, Doc, she's she's gone. I I found her under her car. Oh, I am sorry. Uh, Was it the great earthquake? Uh, it had to be. Do you think you can get to me? Uh, oh, I'll get to you. I need you to help me look for Chloe, okay? No, 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 no. you're right. Of course, of course, you're right. You what? must look for your wife. Uh, I am okay for now, but you go. Uh, I will wait for you. Okay, okay. All right, Doc. Doc, I'll be back for you as soon as I can, okay? Oh, Chloe. Oh, Chloe, if you're alive... No. Oh, no. Buck, don't do that. No ifs. Chloe, you have to be alive. Don't leave me! Not now! Do either of you have a working phone? Get out! You what? Get what are you doing? Out of the chopper now! Captain Steele, I understand you're upset, but you have no... Shut up! Ray. I would be careful if I you can't shut up! Ray, don't do it, man. I'll explain this away. You'll say it was a natural disaster. You'll use it for your own good. But I want to be the first to tell you. <clears throat> Carpathia, you have just seen the wrath of the Lamb! Left Behind, the dramatic audio series is based in part on the book Nikolai by Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins and has been adapted for radio by Chris Fabry with music by Steve Wick, directed and produced by Todd Bastide. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series is a production of Gap Digital and Tyndale House Publishers. Thank you for listening. <laughs>